QuickBooks Online 2022 Statement of Cash Flows. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. Going into the test drive, we're looking at the United States version of it and verifying that we're not a robot. Sample company, Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, holding control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're also going to have the free 30-day trial version open just so we can look at the business view, comparing it to the accounting view. If you don't have access to this, that's okay because we're just looking at it for reference purposes at this point. Going back to the sample company, we're going to open up a few tabs so that we can put reports in them. Go into the tab up top, right-clicking on it, duplicating the tab. Back to the tab to the left, right-clicking on it again, duplicating again. One more duplication of the duplication process, right-clicking on the tab, duplicating it again. As those three tabs are thinking, we're going to jump back over to the 30-day free trial version. Just to note where the reports are located here, they're going to be in the business overview section and they are in the reports. If you were to change the view to the accounting view, which you can do by going to the cog drop down, switch to the accounting view, you'd have a similar view to what we're looking at in the sample file, which we'll go back to now in the sample file. Sample file, we got the second tab. We're gonna look at those reports in the accounting view, which is down here on the left hand side. We're gonna be looking at and focusing in on the statement of cash flows. The statement, let's close the hamburger first. The statement of cash flows is a major financial statement report, but it's not as major or not one that you're going to be using all the time as the balance sheet and the income statement or the profit and loss. In other words, you can think of it as something if you were to construct the three financial statement type of reports, you would make the balance sheet and profit and loss first and then the statement of cash flow. So in that way, it's kind of still kind of like a supplemental type of report that you construct after having taken the general financial data using the reports that you're going to be doing the data input with and creating the major financial statement reports that will be using all of the GL accounts that have activity in them in the balance sheet and in the income statement. And then we're going to use that and kind of adjust it a little bit to make the statement of cash flow, which we'll talk about more in a second. But it'll be down here in the business overview section where you got all the balance sheet type of reports, then all the income statement type of reports. And then we've got the statement of cash flow hanging out way down here at the bottom, feeling kind of left out at the bottom of the thing down here. So we're going to open it back up, scroll up top. Let's do a range change up top from 010121 to 123121. Run it. And then let's open up our other two reports by going to the tab to the right going to the reports down on the left hand side opening up the balance sheet report that gets all the attention why does it get all the attention says cash flow report closing the hamburger let's do a range change up top we're going to take this from 010121 to 123121 run it and then we'll go to the tab to the right and open up the income statement also a very famous report that everybody talks about all the time reports on the left hand side it's got two names even otherwise known as the profit and loss report scrolling up range change on that one 010121 to 123121 and run that report so let's close the hamburger let's just kind of recap what these three reports do real quick the first report is going to be the balance sheet report that reports where we stand as of a point in time assets liabilities and equity you could think about equity being the net book value of the company so that's what the owner you can think about is most kind of concerned with in, in general, the net value of the company, kind of the bottom line of the balance sheet. The income statement then is showing us the performance going back a period of time, typically a month, a quarter or a year, and showing us how we got from the prior point, the prior balance sheet point, that prior place to the current point with regards to the, the timing accounts income and the expense account so where does the statement of cash flow fit into this the statement of cash flow fits in because these two accounts are typically or these two reports are typically reported on an accrual basis process which means we're reporting revenue not necessarily when cash is received but instead when we've earned the cash and we're reporting the expenses not necessarily when cash is paid but when we've incurred the the uh, expense so if I go back to the first tab over here, just to look at our dropdown, 
Note that if you're using an invoice, you're doing some of the cruel things because you have a, a, a transaction that doesn't have cash related to it. And if you're using, say, a, a bill form, you're doing an accrual kind of thing because accounts receivable is going to be, I mean, accounts payable is an accrual type of account, no cash related to that transaction. Now, you might say, well, I'm on a cash basis method, so I don't need the statement of cash flows. But even if you're on a, a cash basis, and you might be, for example, you might be just constructing your entire books from the bank statement, from bank feeds, and you're using basically a cash basis system. You're constructing it from the cash flow that's going through your bank account in that instance. However, even then, there's going to be some deviations from a strict cash basis. For example, if you purchase equipment for cash, then you're still going to have to put it on the books as, as, a, um, as an asset at least for taxes, even the tax code is going to force you to deviate from a cash basis of just expensing a $100,000 building, for example, even if you pay cash for it. And if you finance something, now you've got cash flows related to basically a loan and so, and so forth that has cash flow impacts as well. So even if you're on a cash basis, if you're on a cash basis, then you know your income statement is going to be more flowing, kind of like a cash basis. But even still, you're going to have some transactions that are uh, on, a, on an accrual basis and the cash flow basis then will show us just what it would expect to show the cash flow that is happening. Now, if you're going to do a cash flow basis, you would think then you'd say, okay, well, here's my income statement. It's showing basically income and expenses on an accrual basis. Why don't I just reconstruct my income statement in essence to show the cash flows on a cash basis? And you could do that and that would be called the direct method of uh, the income statement over the cash flow statement. But that would only be taken into consideration like the first component of the cash flow statement, which is usually the biggest component. And it's not usually the thing that's going to be required by for financial reporting, because even though that makes a lot of sense, it doesn't give you a reconciliation between the accrual basis and the cash basis. If I change top to bottom, I'm not really reconciling from net income on an accrual basis to a cash basis. Therefore, most of the time they require financial reporting often requires a what we call an indirect method, which is basically a reconciliation of net income on the accrual basis and net income on the cash basis. So keeping that in mind, let's jump on over to the statement of cash flows and let's do our same kind of process. Here's the whole kind of thing right here. Let's try to minimize everything and, and deconstruct this statement of cash flows. So I'm going to minimize everything here and then and make it as small as possible. And there there's the major categories that we have. Now, note that these major categories that we have are not, if I go back to the first tab, as we saw with the profit loss in the income statement in the accounting section and in the chart of accounts, meaning we're not constructing the statement of cash flows from the items in the chart of accounts as we make financial transactions in the same way that we are basically when we do the balance sheet and the income statement. Instead, we are constructing the balance sheet and the income statement and then using those statements in essence to create the statement of cash flow. So we don't have that direct kind of flow from the transactions to the statement of cash flows because again, we're making the financial statements of balance sheet and income statement kind of first. That's how you would generally think of it. There's three categories, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities that we're going to be talking about. We're going to look at the cash flows related to those three activities. The biggest one is usually going to be the operating activities. And that, in essence, is what we talked about with the income statement. That's the first thing you would think about. Well, I'm going to take my income statement, convert it from an accrual basis to a cash basis. And that would be kind of like my operating activities. But instead of doing that from top to bottom, I'm going to do it from bottom to top, meaning I'm going to start at net income and deconstruct, reconcile to get to the cash on a cash basis. That's the operating activities. Investing activities are those items that are going to be cash related that aren't basically related to income statement items. And those mainly include things like financing equipment because you got investments into a long term assets that you had to put on the balance sheet for investment type of purposes. So investments could mean also investments like we typically think of them from a financial standpoint investing in stocks and bonds but usually for a business we're, we're taking into consideration long-term investments that we had to put on the books as an asset instead of an expense 
purchases of property, plants and equipment, fixed assets, depreciable assets. And then we have the financing activities, which could include the financing of the company, meaning we needed to, to get money somehow and we get money in order to invest in the assets of the company in order to generate revenue from either the owner or we get the financing from a loan or something like that generally. So that means that the cash flows down here are going to be inflows and outflows from the owner, which if it was a sole proprietorship would be investments from the owner. And uh, and if it was a company, the inflows would be would be sales of stock, for example, inflows of owner. And then the outflows, which for a sole proprietorship would be the draws of the owner. And for a partnership, for a corporation, they would be dividends on the outflows. That gives us our net cash increase for the period. So this is the change because this is a performance report, meaning what are my changes? What's what happened from my cash flow from the beginning of the period? Same kind of thing as the income statement. We're saying, where did we start at? Where did we stand at the beginning? And then this statement is saying, what did we do in order to get to the end of the period? That's the change. So we don't want to leave it at the change because we want to tie it into the cash flow on the balance sheet. Therefore, we take that change and we compare it to to the ending period I mean, we take that change and, and add the beginning period cash to get to the ending cash. So the bottom line of the statement of cash flows will tie out to the balance sheet for cash. So that 496352 should tie out to the balance sheet here. Now, the balance, it's a little bit tricky because remember, we had that undeposited funds, which they didn't put into the bank account. So when you tie this in, you got to say, OK, I've got total banking account cash 2901. Plus, I've got this undeposited funds. If there's anything in it hanging out down here of 2062.52, that gives us our 4963.50 or 52, which is on the, the statement of cash flows. So it's going to tie out to the balance sheet. Okay, so let's open, let's open this up uh, one by one. Operating activities is typically the largest, uh, the largest activity involved. We're going to start out at net income. So we're not starting. Remember, if I, if I look at the income statement, I'm not taking this from top to bottom, starting out at the revenue line item, but I'm taking it from bottom to top and reconciling starting from the net income line. So I got the net income starting point, and then I take these adjustments. Now, this is where it gets really confusing to many people. And if you're able, by the way, to construct a statement of cash flows, then you're understanding the accrual concept quite well. And I, we do have some courses on that if you wanted to, to look into that. But the reason it gets confusing here is because you're saying, OK, well, you're talking about income statement. I'm trying to get down to basically net income on a cash basis. You would think then the adjustments would be income statement accounts, revenue and expense accounts, which they would in a direct method. But instead, we're going to back into the changes, the adjustments. So what we're going to do is take all of the differences in the accounts basically on the balance sheet that have a relation to basically an, a transaction on the income statement. And we're going to take the difference between those accounts. So in other words, if I took the accounts receivable, for example, on the balance sheet, which represents money that is owed to us for work that we did for a customer, which we have not yet been paid for, and I take what people owed us at the beginning versus what people owed us at the end, the difference, the change between those accounts would represent would, would represent like an accrual adjustment that we would need to adjust in order to get back to basically a cash basis. So we're kind of backing in to the cash basis by reversing out the accrual components. Inventory also is kind of an accrual thing because when, you, when you're tracking the inventory, you kind of paid for the inventory and then you put it on the books as an asset instead of basically like expensing it. So once again, if I take the difference between the asset accounts, I'm kind of backing into the accrual component. I won't get into it in a lot more detail than that, but that's the general idea. Accounts payable is the same thing. You wouldn't have accounts payable on a cash basis because you didn't pay, you know, you, it's a non-cash transaction to record accounts payable because it's making it an expense and increasing the liability. So if you were to take the difference in accounts payable, from the beginning and end of the period, you're kind of backing into that accrual transaction. Same with the credit card, same with the, the payable for the, the taxes, state taxes, or, or this is the sales tax. And then you've got the loan payable, which I believe this is just the current portion of the loan payable, which some, you know you would think the loan payable might be in 
the financing activities here, so I won't get into that now. But in any case, that's going to give us the total adjustments uh, to reconcile net income to cash. And then down here, we're going to have the net cash provided by operating activities, which again, you could kind of think of as the, the kind of net income on a cash basis. So notice what we have here. If we did the direct method, we would basically kind of take revenue and expenses and convert them to a cash basis. And we could imagine getting to the same number, but we wouldn't have this nice reconciliation. Here we have this nice reconciliation saying, here's the net income on the, on the, on the accrual basis. And these are all the changes that get us to, in essence, the net income on uh, a, a cash basis. So then we have the investing activities. If I open them up, we've got just, and remember this could be investing, we often think of as like stocks and bonds, which could be here, but usually we're thinking of investing in a broader term here. We're thinking about any kind of investment in like fixed assets is the typical category because when we have the business, we're usually getting capital, getting money in some way, shape or form through the owners or through the uh, loans and we're putting them into the investment of machinery and equipment or something like that that we're going to use to generate revenue so that that's usually what's going to be here is going to be the changes in the property plant and equipment similar kind of idea we're going to take you can imagine taking kind of like the difference between the beginning and ending balance and kind of backing into the cash flow related to the investing activities to the depreciable assets now notice that this cash flow statement uh on QuickBooks, we can get a pretty good cash flow statement that's in balance. As you can see, it ties out to the cash on the balance sheet. But when you get into more complex transactions, such as you're disposing of equipment that's partially depreciated or something like that, and you're financing equipment when you're purchasing it, you're financing part of it or something like that, then you can get into situations where you might have to do some tweaking to really get your cash flow statement properly reported. Uh, so, so you know keep that in mind but this gives you a good you know a nice a nice cash flow st statement here to start off with at least and then the financing activities generally your loan kind of information uh, would be here and notice it took it's taking the the note payable here which is the long-term loan and putting it down here and i think the reason it took the loan payable up top is because this was the current the current loan so again the the, the system meaning this is categorized as a current liability and the system is saying, I'm going to take all the current liabilities and put them up top in this section, operating activities, and I'm going to take the long-term liabilities and put them down into financing, which is a you know, good rule of thumb in general, but not, again, it might not fit in all scenarios or be the best, the best way in all scenarios. So just keep in mind, you could have some differences related to that, but you got the financing related to the notes payable. You can also have, again, if there were draws that were in place here that could be down here or that would be dividends for a corporation would be the cash flow in this area. Opening balance equity shouldn't really be here because that's a beginning balance adjustment. It's kind of an ugly thing to have in here because that's kind of like a plug type of account. But in any case, then we've got the net cash provided by financing and then the net cash increase, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be these all the, the the three categories together and then we've got the uh, cash at the end of the period which is the bottom line also note that you would generally see cash at the beginning of the period here too but i think this is the first period of operation so there is no beginning period cash so normally you would have to change and then add that to the beginning period cash there is none and so you got the cash at the end of the period so for example if i looked at this cash flow for just let's say the month of december 1231 let's say 120121 and then ran that report so now we've got the cash flow da, 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 and then we go down here net cash increase for the period it's negative notice again the terminology can get, can get a little out of out of whack here or out of not quite correct because it says net cash increase for the period and you can see it's a decrease here so that's another thing with the cash flow statements is often a problem and so when you make a generic cash flow, you might, instead of saying increase and decrease, you might call it change in cash, the change in cash. That means it's, if it's an increase or decrease, you're covered. And then change them all to increase or decrease based on whether there was an increase or decrease. But in any case, then you got the cash at the beginning of the period down below. So what you're really concerned with is this change in cash right here, 
That's the activity. That's the timing statement that's happening. That's what happened during the period. But then in order to tie it out to the, the cash on the balance sheet, you're going to add the beginning cash, the 53291, which if I go to the balance sheet here, in this case, would be as of the end of November. So let's say 1101.21 to 11.32.1 and run it, run it. So that's the full, well, then I got to add the undeposited funds. So let's pull out the trusty calculator. So now we've got the 4345.76 plus the undeposited funds, which is now at the 687.15. And then if I go back to this tab, that's the 503291 at the beginning. And then and then that and that gets us to that 496352, which I believe is a familiar number that we saw last time. So so there we have it. And again, you can kind of see that this statement whenever you whenever you like talk about the financial statements you're going to say okay the financial statements the balance sheet and the income statement or profit and loss and someone's going to say well the cash flow statement is a financial statement as well and you're going to say well yes it is a financial statement but usually when you're talking about the, the journal entries if i go back to the first tab and enter the journal entries then i'm usually talking about these things that i'm entering these forms which create a financial transaction and I first think about, is that financial transaction constructing my first two financial statements, balance sheet and income statement, correctly? And that's why you're always going to have these two financial statements open and possibly a trial balance, which represents the balance sheet on top of the income statement. And then you think about usually that you're usually then thinking about the, in, the statement of cash flows, which is going to be built off of the balance sheet and the income statement and can give you more information, of course, related to a very important component being the cash flow.